Listen up. This just in. All the gossip. Gossip. The rumor report. Gossip. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club. Well, sad news. Jacqueline Avant, who is the wife of music executive Clarence Avant, was fatally shot in her home in Beverly Hills. She's a philanthropist, and uh, they said that she was most known for the work that she has done in support of the UCLA International Student Center, Mm -hmm. also serving as one time the president of the Neighbors of Watts, a support group for the South Central Community Child Care Center, and as entertainment chairman of the Now Benefit Auction. As you know, we've spoken of, about Clarence Avon up here. He's known as the Black Godfather of music. He's uh-huh. worked with and also advised people like Bill Withers, Babyface, the SOS Band, Sherelle. Michael Jackson. Yes, many others. He's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He was mm-hmm. inducted in 2021, this year, and he received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in uh, 2016. Mm-hmm. So uh, they don't know. They're saying it's too soon to call it a home invasion or a follow home robbery. Right. And the motives in the case are still unknown, but they are investigating all possible motives. They will not speculate on anything that's out there, including if this was a robbery attempt or not. But a really sad situation uh, to see something like that happen. And I saw that uh, Tyler Perry was saying that he will find and use all whatever resources possible. He said, my heart breaks for Clarence and Nicole mm. and all the Avant, Avant fi- family. This world can be so cruel and cold. I have no idea what kind of subhuman could shoot an 81-year-old woman and in her own home. Sounds but you so can crazy. rest assured that every available resource will be used to find whoever is responsible for this awful nightmare. This is tremendously sad. Yeah, they said the, the, the back uh, porch window was broken. They said that I believe they did have security. Uh, the security guard was shot as well. They don't know if this was a break-in, if this was a robbery gone wrong, if it was a home invasion. Like you said, if it was a follow-home. But it's just it's just nasty out there, and, and, and you just got to be extra, extra safe. I know in L.A. they do that a lot. I've seen in Atlanta they do that a lot, too. I mean, come on. We saw what just happened with Terrence J., yeah, where they it. followed him home and tried to block him in and shot at his car and everything. And unfortunately, so he was able to get away. Nasty. But our heart does go out to the Avant family. All right, now, Jesse Smollett, his trial has started, and uh, according to the brothers who took the stand, the Osendaro brothers, they are saying that, uh, Bola is saying that uh, Jesse Smollett agreed to pretend to beat him up. He said he wanted me to beat him up. He testified yesterday. He said, I believed he could help further my acting career. He told me that we would need another person to fake beat him up. He mentioned, could my brother do it? I said, yes. He said the discussion happened in a car as Smollett was driving him home from the sh- uh, show Chicago Studio. Court did adjourn yesterday at 7 p.m. with uh, the brother Bola Osendaro still on the stand. He was not cross-examined, but they're expecting that to happen today. So they do have evidence, including texts and accounts from Osendaro and his brother, pointing to Smollett paying them $3,500 to stage a hate crime attack against him so he could get publicity and a career boost. So neither of the brothers have been charged with a crime, but Justice Smollett is pleading not guilty. And that is for six counts of disorderly conduct for allegedly making false reports to police that he was a victim of a hate crime. Yeah, I'll be honest. I don't really necessarily care about this Jesse Smollett case. It feels like we've been through it already. It, it was done and now we're bringing it back up. I honestly don't care. Yeah, I mean, now they're finally taking this. Stand. I didn't even know this was going to end up going to trial. But one of the uh, brothers said that Smollett allegedly told him to say empire and then a gay slur, then the N word, then MAGA. And then he said he wanted me to attack him, but he wanted me to pull the punch so I don't hurt him, give him a bruise. The final part of the plan would be to pour bleach on him and then he would run away. And they said it was Jesse Smollett's uh, directions to do all of that allegedly. That's wild if he did do that just to give him a little boost in his career. That's wild. All right, now Alec Baldwin sat down and did an interview with ABC News, and an excerpt was released yesterday. Now, in this excerpt, he says that he never pulled the trigger of the gun that shot the director, Helena Hutchins, on the set of Rust. She was someone who was loved by everyone who worked with and liked by everyone who worked with and admired. I mean, even now, I find it hard to believe that. It just doesn't seem, it doesn't seem real to me. It wasn't in the script for the trigger to be pulled. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. I, I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. How did a real bullet get on I, that set? I have no idea. Someone put a live bullet in a gun, a bullet that wasn't even supposed to be on the property. You said you're not a victim, but is this the worst thing that's ever happened to you? Yes. I think back, and I think of what could I have done. Now, there's so many, so many crazy things with that. Now, 
First of all, I, I thought that he said before he allegedly said he pulled the trigger, correct? I thought he said that before. He said the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. Well, he said that now, but I thought before he said he pulled the trigger. I think this is the first time speaking on it. Mm. I thought he said before he pulled the trigger. I could be wrong. And that's another thing. So he didn't pull the trigger, so the gun just went off? I mean, I don't know. It's still under investigation. And then there was no live, there was supposed to be no live rounds and he didn't check? It just, all that just seems a little weird. Well, I don't know if it was up to him to check. Mm. There's, uh, clearly somebody was supposed to check. I don't know that that was on him. But that interview will be airing tonight on ABC with George Stephanopoulos if you want to watch. Mm. All right, Wendy Williams was spotted leaving a wellness center in Miami. We've been talking about the health issues that she's had. The video uh, circulated on social media showing her in a red Versace robe. Mm -hmm. Uh, she was with her son, Kevin Jr., by her side, and she said she is doing fabulous and that there's a lot more Wendy stuff. And so here's what she had to say. Hey, Wendy. Are you sad about the show being canceled? Any plans for a new show? Everyone does hope you feel better. Thank you. Yes, good luck to you, all right? Sorry to bug you. Okay. Is your recovery going okay? Because everyone is really concerned. Wendy is doing fabulous. She's doing fabulous. Yeah. Any any more words for the fans? Lots more Wendy stuff. All right. So now that's you know I, people like that I can't stand. I'm leaving a wellness center. I'm in a robe. I'm barefoot. I'm trying to get to my car. And you're gonna ask me, are you sad that the show is not coming back? Yeah, mother F. I'm They're sad. trying to the have a moment. Are you okay? No, do I look okay? I'm trying to get in my car. Like, leave me the f alone. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. That don't bother you. I'm, I'm leaving the wellness center trying to get in my car. I'm trying to heal. I have no shoes on. I'm in a robe. I'm trying you to get back to no the You know there ain't no privacy crib. out here. Stop it. Are you sad that the Wendy show? What, what do you expect? What do you think? You think I'm sad? No, I'm, no, I'm happy. I'm, I'm grateful. She might be. Maybe she's yes. tired of it. Yes, I couldn't wait. Yes. She might feel like, okay, whew, that chapter's closed. Time to move on. My goodness. All Who right. Knows? Well, we got front page news next. What are we talking about? Yes, and more tragedy. A fourth student has died following the mm. shooting at a Michigan high school, at Oxford High School. And we'll tell you more details of uh, the 15-year-old, Ethan Crumbly. He was taken into custody. He's being charged as an adult. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.